So next, let's look at module three, and this is about choosing your course type. So what type of course are you planning on creating? You can do all sorts of things. You know, are you doing a process? So example, how to set up a coaching business. Is it a speciality like how to become a relationship coach? Maybe it's a knowledge-based training, like understanding what makes relationships work or fail. Maybe your course is about teaching specific tasks, like how to market your coaching business. Maybe it's a specific discipline within a niche, like sex coaching. Maybe your training is an activity. So example, how to do a wheel of life or how to do a wheel of relationships. So your training might be how to attain a certain goal. Example, how to find your ideal partner within the next three months. Or maybe your training is about a method. So example, the seven habits of maintaining a successful relationship. Maybe your course is the next level. Maybe it's the advanced program for making any man or woman fall for you. Or maybe it's a DIY project like how to cook the most romantic meal. Now there's also different course structures that you might be able to choose from. M maybe you're doing a combination of these. It all depends on what training you're going to be delivering. So maybe you're doing some live webinar or you're doing podcast based courses. Maybe you're doing an on-demand course which has been pre-recorded. Example, you're, you're a coach and you took each of those that we just spoke about, how to set up your coaching business, how to become a relationship coach, sex coaching, wheel of relationship, etc. And you can have a course on each one of those individual subjects. And your ideal client can then cherry pick and decide which of those courses they want to do and also when they want to do them. Maybe a course is an email course. Maybe it's a video course. Maybe it's just based of workbooks. So let's say example it was a goal setting workbook. It could be that you're doing a live training that you've actually recorded and that might be in its raw form. It might be edited versions of that as well. An example, one of the things that I do for our online NLP training a lot of it is screen capture, but then there's also lots of live demonstrations which have been recorded within live workshops. Your course might be paid, it might be free, again depending for what purpose you're creating the course. You could have your courses in installments, so your participant can't do the next module until they've completed the previous module, or maybe they just get each module in certain increments so maybe once a week they get the new module and of course your course could be a one-time course so example a single course or single class that achieves the the course goal within one session and so the structures then that you choose how to deliver your course whether it's just one of these structures or it's a combination of really should reflect your teaching preferences as well as your ideal participants learning preferences so it might be totally different how you train younger people let's say you were working with uh, children at school might be a totally different way of delivering the course matter or the material than maybe somebody who is a CEO of a fortune 500 company the timings might be different when they actually receive the course material are there any interactions that they need to do? So each of these things need to be taken into account. You also want to look at their skill level and you know their budget. Depending on the course that you're going to deliver, you know if you're doing it for free and you're creating a 200 video course that's been filmed in a live workshop and you spent 500 hours editing the video well then that's going to have a cost to you you need to consider 
are you doing this as paid or are you doing it as a free course? And of course, the more information that you put in and the more time that you put in and effort and resources that you put in might affect the cost that you charge for your course. You also want to consider their level of experience and their expertise, as we said. Are they able, if it's a if it's an email course, do they have access to email? If it's an online course, do they have access to the internet? Now, the beauty about teaching, of course, is knowing that there's not just one way to do it. So you can choose the exact structure, length, price, delivery method that makes it easiest for you and, of course, delighting the right participant at the same time. And this will be different for each person. It'll be different for each person taking this course. And it'll be different for the people that are going to be doing your courses. And as we go through the rest of this training, we are going to be touching on email, on video, on workbooks, etc. You will also be looking later on in the training of what pricing you might charge your courses if you are going to charge for your course. So we'll talk about those in the future modules. So see you in module four.